The PlayStation 4 has already had an insane lineup of games in 2017, and the fall promises to bring a lot more great titles. We've got 12 games to look over, so let's get right into the top 12 upcoming PS4 games of fall 2017. Number 12, Dot Hack GU Last Recode. The PlayStation 2 was a haven for JRPGs. There were so many great titles with the Final Fantasy game, Star Ocean. I can go on and on. One series that did make an impact in that PS2 JRPG library is Dot Hack, and now we have the Dot Hack GU lineup of games coming to the PS4. Many would say that the original four games are better than GU. They both are very good series, and it's very nice to see Dot Hack back in general. Dot Hack GU Last Recode will bundle the three games of the series. It'll feature all your typical HD remastering upgrades, better visuals, better technical performance, some gameplay refinements, and this will also include an additional episode. It'll probably be a little bit shorter, but that's a nice inclusion as well. Dot Hack GU Last Recode comes to the PlayStation 4 on November 3rd. Number 11, Gran Turismo Sport. Gran Turismo has always been one of the most iconic PlayStation franchises, but with the PlayStation 4, we haven't seen a brand new Gran Turismo entry. That's changing with Gran Turismo Sport, which series creator Kazunori Yamauchi is considering a new generation of Gran Turismo. The first six games encompass the first generation of Gran Turismo, and Gran Turismo Sport is expected to launch off a new generation. Whatever the case may be with that, it's just exciting to see Gran Turismo in some form on the PlayStation 4. Now, one of the key elements of Gran Turismo Sport is the fact that it can be played fully using VR, the PlayStation VR. That should add a brand new layer to the Gran Turismo experience, and we'll see how that turns out when Gran Turismo Sport releases on October 17th. Number 10, South Park The Fractured But Whole. Last generation, we saw the release of South Park The Stick of Truth, and on paper, when you told somebody that we were gonna get a South Park game with traditional RPG mechanics, off the bat, you're not thinking of it to be an amazing game. However, that's exactly what South Park The Stick of Truth was. It nailed it in every area. It retained that witty humor that South Park is known for, that charming art style, the design, that was on point, and the traditional RPG mechanics were really well done, so you had a really solid RPG foundation with great design and great characters, and it just made up for a great game. Now we have South Park The Fractured But Whole, which will build upon the Stick of Truth now with more superhero thematics. There's gonna be several different classes to play as, and it's gonna add some depth to the gameplay. South Park The Stick of Truth releases on October 17th. I already let you dual class, there's nothing left to talk about. <laughs> Do not give me those sad puppy eyes, you are not going to have three classes. What? But I only need a few hundred for that. So you know what I'm gonna do with all the rest? Go to Paris and get a Pete Allen has been and fuck French chicks. Super Craig. Number 9, Dead Rising 4, Frank's Big Package. A new Dead Rising game is finally coming to the PS4. While we did see Dead Rising 2 arrive to the PS4, we didn't see Dead Rising 3, and Dead Rising 4 was initially only available on the Xbox One, but later this year, it's finally gonna come out for PS4 in the form of Frank's Big Package. Dead Rising 4 followed suit with previous games. It's an open world, very chaotic hack and slash game. There's no timer this time around, and the story mode doesn't have any co-op, which is kind of a bummer. The game didn't receive all too strong reviews on Xbox One, but nonetheless, this is a franchise that has been missing from the PlayStation 4's library, so at the very least, it's nice to see it finally come over. This version on PS4 will also come with some bonuses, some extra content missions, skins, things of that sort, and it'll come to the PS4 almost one year after the Xbox One release on December 5th. Well, at least I know I'm going the right way.
Number 8, Call of Duty World War II. Call of Duty, the yearly juggernaut, is back once again, much to the surprise of no one, but now it is coming with a twist. It's going back to World War II, which is a setting that's been missing from the franchise for a while. World War II games in the mid-2000s were done to death, so they stepped away from that, but now they're going back, and it seems like a breath of fresh air, which the series has been dying for. The competitive multiplayer is really being refined and gone are the usual create a class system, now we have division. You choose one out of five divisions, each with their own different basic combat training, division training, and weapon skills. This also eliminates perks as players need to progress through ranks and divisions in order to use additional skills. You'll also have a zombies mode with its own original storyline and a campaign mode as well of course. At this point, if you've completely checked out of Call of Duty, there's probably nothing that's gonna win you back over. But for those of you that just want a different flavor to your Call of Duty experience, World War II is probably gonna bring that when it releases on November 3rd. Goes all the way across France, Belgium, and into uh, Germany. It's, uh, and some of the biggest battles of World War II, from Battle of the Bulge to Hurricane Forest and, and the liberation of Paris. Now, I know you guys are focusing on that European front for the campaign, yes. but I think I caught a hint that maybe it might expand a bit on the multiplayer side. So what are you at liberty to say at this point in time? <laughs> well, we showed a lot in the trailer. You're catching part of it here. This is yeah. the Ardennes Forest. Uh, which extends from Belgium to Germany. Number 7, Danganronpa V3 Killing Harmony. Visual novels is a genre that really hasn't found its footing yet over here in the States. Over in Japan, it's a big genre, but here it's still trying to figure itself out. One VN series that has been gaining some popularity is Danganronpa. The games are very interesting, very engaging, have great character development, and have a very interesting setting. You play as a high school student locked inside of a high school with a bunch of other students, you're trapped in there, and the idea of the game is that you have to kill someone somebody else in order to escape, but you can't be caught by any of the other students. It's a very interesting concept, and me explaining it isn't going to do the series justice. Just know that it's a franchise you should definitely check out, even if visual novels haven't been your cup of tea. The first two games are available in a collection on the PS4, and Danganronpa V3 will feature a brand new cast of characters and setting, so it's not paramount that you play the previous two games. Danganronpa V3 Killing Harmony hits the PS4 on September 26th. I haven't been in a trial in like forever. I've had enough of your lives, man! Everyone's life is at stake! What do they want with us? You're a terrible person! This is bad. We need to get out of here. Wait! Come on! Pull me up the hook. Why you look so nervous? Why don't you just admit it already? Everyone, stop! We gotta work together to find the mastermind. Then we can end this. Number 6, Dragon's Dogma Dark Arisen. Dragon's Dogma was one of the great action RPGs released late last generation. It did gain a lot of popularity, a lot of people really enjoyed the game, many drew comparisons to Dark Souls, and I definitely see those comparisons, but it does have its own unique elements. The setting is great, the only thing that really held it back on last generation consoles was its performance. There were frame rate drops and technical hiccups, but now with it coming to PS4 in the form of Dragon's Dogma Dark Arisen, expect those problems to be eliminated. It also includes the Dark Arisen expansion, which is going to add a ton more content and things to do as well. If you've never played Dragon's Dogma, you should, and if you want a reason to revisit the game, it's coming to the PS4 on October 3rd. Number 5, Middle Earth Shadow of War. Many would consider Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor to be one of the first great games on next generation platforms. Prior to that, we had seen many good games, but nothing of that very good or excellent tier. I think it's safe to say that Shadow of Mordor was a great game. Middle Earth Shadow of War is the follow-up and it'll build right upon Shadow of Mordor following the story from that game. Now Shadow of War has had a ton of controversy surrounding it regarding the DLC content as well as microtransactions. However, fundamentally from a gameplay standpoint and a storytelling standpoint, it's probably going to be a very good game. It's just unfortunate that all that controversy has to surround it. Nonetheless, Middle Earth Shadow of War will be coming to the PlayStation 4 on October 10th. is beyond us, Kilibrimbo. Not with the spirit of Karnan at our side.
Number 4, Star Wars Battlefront 2. Star Wars Battlefront was one of the most anticipated games of this generation. To see that series come back revived, it was very exciting, but many people were left disappointed with the 2015 entry. Fundamentally, there were a lot of strong elements to the game. The issue was from a content standpoint, it was just bare bones as it could get. No traditional single player campaign, and the multiplayer didn't have a lot of replay value. It was a game that you could jump in and have some fun, but long term wise, it's not a game you were going to stick around with. Star Wars Battlefront 2 is looking to change that. It's gonna include a traditional single player campaign. It's going to add a lot of depth to the multiplayer with different classes and cross era characters. Hopefully Star Wars Battlefront 2 is the game we were expecting the 2015 entry to be. We'll find out on November 17th. So you can see those guys as pushers or defenders in some areas. But it looks like we got one of our vulture droids right now. I'm not sure who's flying this guy, but these guys are great at air to air trying to take out those other ships that might be coming in, that Naboo N1 Starfighter. Otherwise right. they're there to provide some great ground support like we're seeing here. Trying to get some strafing runs in on those cones. Oh no! Oh. <laughs> Come on, man! You <laughs> Missed that tower. You just, you just did it wrong there, buddy. So Sorry it's great about we, that. We also do have the air support, but we also have ground support as well. We do, we do. Uh, so another thing that those air vehicles are great at is trying to take out... Number 3, Assassin's Creed Origins. For the last decade, Assassin's Creed has been one of the most iconic franchises in the gaming world. However, as is the case with a lot of yearly franchises, after a while it did get a little stale and a little repetitive, but even then, the majority of the games were good. Going back to Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag, the 2013 entry, that was a great game. The 2015 entry, Assassin's Creed Syndicate, was a very good game. The real damage that was done to the franchise was done by the 2014 game, Assassin's Creed Unity. That game was an absolute mess, but Assassin's Creed as a whole shouldn't be judged just based on Unity. Now with Ubisoft taking 2016 off, 2017 will bring Assassin's Creed Origins, and as the title suggests, it's an origin story about how the Brotherhood came to be. Gameplay-wise, expected to be a lot more engaging, a lot more versatile, more RPG mechanics, and new elements elements such as the ability to tame animals, and other gameplay refinements are also being introduced, so expect Assassin's Creed Origins to be the biggest breath of fresh air that the series has seen in a very long time. Hopefully Assassin's Creed Origins can revitalize the series, it comes October 27th. Egypt is very rich already with, with history and culture, so that even if Bayek, our protagonist, is uh, roaming through the world, that he's still discovering his own country, because mm -hmm. we want our players to discover it as well. Um, but it also affords us to meet epic characters like Caesar and Cleopatra, to go through the end of the, the old era, the beginning of a new world, um, and it felt like that this was a, an amazing crucible of history to, to give the birth of our or Number 2, The Evil Within 2. Great horror games that truly invoke that essence of horror are few and far between these days, but 2014's Evil Within is one that I would classify as a great horror game. In terms of those elements being realized and the atmosphere, it was on point. There were some issues with the game's characters and story, but as far as quality horror games go, Evil Within nailed it. And now we have the sequel, The Evil Within 2, which is going to be similar to its predecessor. You play as Sebastian who's trying to rescue his daughter Lily. Expect the maps in Evil Within 2 to be much larger and there are multiple ways for the players to advance and play through the game. If the Evil Within 2 can retain the horror elements that were present in the first game, increase the world size and improve the storytelling and characters, it has potential to be an excellent horror game. We'll see how it turns out when it releases on October 13th. Gotta find that signal. Yeah, it doesn't look good. Right, so now also, it shows up for picking up another one. So. Should also mention that this is just like the first area. There are all these different kinds of domains that have been that have sprung up in this world during its collapse. And I actually have, a, not to pimp my own stuff, but I have a, a very hearty- <laughs> Not, that was I know. strategic. Uh, I have a very he healthy sized feature with some awesome quotes from the dev team talking about um, how this world was created. Finally, number one, Wolfenstein 2 The New Colossus. Single player first person shooters aren't something that always light the gaming world on fire. However, 2014's Wolfenstein The New Order was an awesome game. Wolfenstein The Old Blood was a great game too, and now we have the follow up to The New Order in Wolfenstein 2 The New Colossus. It follows the events of the previous game where the Nazis won the Second World War, and now in 1961, a second American revolution is being set up against the Nazi regime. It's a very cool and exciting premise, and expect great characters great storytelling and awesome FPS gameplay. So far what we've seen of the game has looked great from a technical standpoint and a gameplay standpoint. And if it's the same game as New Order just with a new story and new characters, it would already be a great game, but you know the developers are going for far more than that. Expect machine games to raise the bar with the new Colossus with better gameplay and better storytelling. Wolfenstein 2 The New Colossus comes October 27th. 
hitch a ride on one of those cargo trains. So that wraps up our countdown of the top 12 upcoming PS4 games of fall 2017. What do you think? Which PS4 games are you the most excited for coming in fall? Did we forget to mention a game? Let us know in the comment section down below. Thank you for watching and goodbye.